director of the Drupal Association. Um, and I'm one of many, many people uh, involved in the association. We'll get to our structure and everything uh, in just a minute. What I just handed out was our annual report that we just put out earlier this year at DrupalCon Chicago. So we just put it out in March, and it details the financials for last year, 2010, and also 2009. And it gives you a little brief description of what the heck the Drupal Association is. Um, to start things off, how many people here, just by a show of hands, know what the Drupal Association, or have heard of it before today? Oh, awesome. <laughs> up from like two years ago when we ran this session, and there were five people in the room, and four of them were board members, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, does anybody want to take a stab at what, describing what is it that the Drupal Association does, other than the obvious people? But somebody that maybe just heard about the Drupal Association. Yeah, what is the Drupal Association to you? So it pulls the community together, aggregates them, and, and provides a central forum for them to communicate and, and meet each other, as well as organizes DrupalCon. So other, other things you mentioned, hardware, the redesign of dribble.org, um, uh, the migration from CVS over to Git. Does anybody else want to, uh, does anybody else have something different that they think the Drupal Association is, or the impression? Yeah? Thank you for the scholarship. What was that? Thank you for the scholarship. <laughs> and here's one of our scholarship winners. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Julian? Does it govern the, the ongoings of Drupal? Okay. So the, the, the kind of it was more of a, a question of um, govern the Drupal project itself, but we're also maintaining a separation. I'm actually going to get into that in just a minute. Anybody else have an impression, or they were left with an impression, or a, a question of what is the association? The administrative um, organization to make sure that all the Drupal stuff can happen. Can I call it the boring back end bits? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that, that's pretty good. Um, all right, so let's just dig straight into it. So the Drupal Association, uh, and we're gonna start with the boring back-end bits. <laughs> we do have a mission statement, and our mission statement is, the Drupal Association fosters and supports the Drupal software project, the community, and its growth. That's pretty vague. <laughs> means we could do a whole lot of, of, of stuff. Um, but what this means to us is, it's really about community. So the Drupal Association was created to foster this sense of community. And so here are just pictures of what we see as community. This is Drupal Camp LA. This is DrupalCon Copenhagen. It's DrupalCon Copenhagen, some more. This is uh, Belgium Dev Days. This is a camp in India. It's a camp in Milan. I believe this is a camp in Athens. There's camps in Spain, Texas, Peru. But also community are individuals. It doesn't have to be large groups of people. So we obviously have uh, checks here with his really quirky keyboard. Uh, this is a great Drupal developer in Jordan. I just love this guy. I happen to see him everywhere. With little icons everywhere, Amy, and I believe this is also in LA. 
Right, Carrie? Oh, yeah, that's uh, true. I was stalking you. <laughs> so this is the, the community to us. It's people gathering. It's people meeting. It's individuals in their, in their home or their office or their co-working space. It's people at a conference, at a meetup, at a bar, at a camp, or at a sprint. It's, it's wherever people are meeting and getting together to work on Drupal to collaborate on Drupal, to write documentation about Drupal, to teach other people about Drupal, or really if you touch Drupal, that's what it means to us. But at the core of what the association is, it's community. Now we have defined, so what is it that we actually do? We took that big mission statement and we did boil it down to six big bullet points here. And you can see these on association.drupal.org. So we maintain the hardware and software infrastructure we empower the Drupal community to participate. We protect the source code. We protect the Drupal project through legal work and advocacy. We organize um, and promote worldwide events. And we also communicate the benefits of the Drupal software. This is what we are striving to do. Some of these things we do now, and some of these things we are planning to do. So let me go over kind of items of what we're doing now. And I'm going to leave plenty of time at the end uh, for us to for you to ask questions. Um, this is Drupal.org. It's a physical server. <laughs> it's in Corvallis, Oregon, hosted at the uh, uh, Oregon State University Open Source Labs. They're a really great uh, sponsor of our, our, our project, giving us free uh, power and bandwidth and just really great people. And these are the servers that are hosted in their data center. This is the team. That this is part of the team. We have a really large infrastructure team. But this is part of the team that helps to um, manage uh, Drupal.org. Drupal.org is like one rack over. It's partially in this rack and one rack over. These two people, Lance and Jeff, aren't in the Drupal community. They work at OSU OSL at the Open Source Labs. And they're great community members, but they're actually not Drupal developers. But they're part of our community in the sense that they help support us. These two are in our community. This is Narayan Newton. And um, Rudy, forgot his last name temporarily. Rudy, <laughs> we love Rudy. We just, <laughs> but so we have Narayan and Rudy, and they're part of our infrastructure team, along with Gerhardt and a lot of other uh, great people. So this is one of the things that we do. So you can see at the top, maintaining the hardware and software infrastructure of Drupal.org and, and other community sites. Uh, one of the things we did earlier this year that isn't fully done yet, but it's in transition, is these servers right here, anybody know what these servers are? OK, they're old. There's somebody over here. Dirty. Old, dusty, dirty, slow. slow? Uh, they're not bad, actually. They're not bad. Old, dusty, dirty are HP. Any idea what they do? They load balance. That was pretty good. Who, who said that first? Awesome. Any idea what they load balance? All of Drupal.org. <laughs> These machines were, up until later this year, they're in transition. The old, dirty, dusty, cobwebbed, those, that's what, those are our load balancers. That's it. So we went and bought new load balancers. <laughs> um, and they're being put in now. But this is part of what we do behind the scenes. You know. We identified a problem, and we tried to fix it. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your name? Ricardo. Ricardo? So you also brought up some other great things, other things that we've done in the past year for maintaining the hardware. We did the Drupal.org redesign. That was started quite some time ago, but finished earlier this year, and it's still ongoing. Uh, we migrated over to Git. Finally got off of CVS over to Git, and that happened uh, just around DrupalCon Chicago earlier this year in March. We also invested in COD, the Conference Organizing Distribution, which is the uh, distribution of Drupal that we use for DrupalCon. So when we build software for our needs to run this conference, we also give it back to the community. So you guys could run whatever you'd like, whether it's a campsite or use it for a client project. Or so, But it's back into GPL code. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> we have redesigned. 
So, <laughs> yeah, well, th I mean, that's the great thing about Drupal. You can use a distribution, you can pull it straight, you can j go with core and add your own modules or, or however. We found it more beneficial for us to um, sort of create a distribution around our conference to make it easier to come up, um, make it easier for our conferences to be organized, as well as give something back to the community since we're using the funds from the community to fund that project, which then in turn went back into the community. Um, so that's number one, maintaining the hardware and software. So let's move on to bullet point two, empowering the Dribbble community to participate and contribute to the project. So there's many different ways that we try to adhere to our mission here. And empowering, you know, it's a, it's a pretty broad term. There's a lot of different ways we can empower people. One of the ways that we um, started to do that this year was something called the Community Cultivation Grants. How many people have heard of this grant program? Awesome, that's a, that's a number of people, but it's not large, so there's a number of people that are learning it for the first time. So the Community Cultivation Grant Program, it's we set aside um, a set of funds to help grow and foster, the, to support and foster the growth of the Drupal community. And this can happen in a number of different ways. It could be through um, a training program. It could be through a sprint. It could be through maybe a camp. Maybe it's a particular website that you, you, you need some help on, but it's gonna help your community. But it's some way that we're helping you get the funds that you need to build your local community. And in this case, we're really looking at local communities. Now the one thing that we don't ever fund with these grants is software development. So we don't fund module development, and we don't fund the Drupal project itself, but we will fund, say, an educational sprint to help people write better docs so that other people can learn from that. Or uh, a sprint that is teaching other people to write better code. So we would fund things like that to help grow the community. So I, I wanna just sit on that topic for one second. Um, does anybody have any idea why we don't fund any development? <laughs> nope. <laughs> we are busy. <laughs> and that and what Sam said is 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 true. So he said uh it's a conflict of interest. Uh if we fund software development, we in turn can have the ability to guide the project. And that's the one thing that we don't do, nor do we want to do. The project is your project. It's a community project. You, everybody in this room, and everybody at this conference has the ability to direct and lead and guide that project. If you want DA to include you know, uh, new functionality, you can take that on and you can make that happen. We, we can't help that. If you want you know, D7 to have a new security release, that's what the community does. If you wanna add 10 or 20 or 40 new modules or reduce the number of modules, and merge those modules, that's you guys. It's the community. And we don't wanna be in that position where we're guiding the project because really the core and the nature of open source is it's community built. And if we start guiding the project, we're getting away from the community. And so we're staying with the community by creating programs like the cultivation grant, uh, community cultivation grant program because we wanna help support you guys, help support the community so you can make those decisions, so you can guide the project and you can lead it. But we're just there to be your support base. So that launched uh, earlier this year and they're going to be announcing their first round of grants tomorrow, um, which I think is really exciting. Uh, we're funding, I think, nine projects in about seven different countries, um, which is pretty awesome but I'm not gonna steal their thunder, so you gotta wait till tomorrow. The other program that we launched this year was something called BizConnect. How many people have heard of this program? Okay, a few. <coughs> For those of you who heard of it, you wanna take a stab at what it is? What is BizConnect?
Yeah, facilitating. So, facilitating business connections. Anybody else want to take a stab at that? Yeah. So, <laughs> connecting maybe with enterprise companies and uh, letting them know about resources. Possibly. So the reason we created this program, uh, I mean, there were several reasons, but one of the big ones actually goes back to community. Right? We use the word biz because it is focused on businesses. But what we were finding in the past year and a half is that a lot of new businesses were coming into our community, and they didn't know how to get started. They were switching over to Drupal from whatever it is they were doing before. Maybe a proprietary CMS, maybe one of the big vendors that you've heard of. But whatever they were doing, they were switching. And they're like, Drupal's it. Drupal's great. Drupal's awesome. But before, they were in a Drupal shop. And they were like, well, what do we do? <laughs> like, how do we get involved in this community? And they still had a sort of a business mentality. They were waiting for uh, somebody to tell them what to do. So if the, uh, a lot of businesses, if they work with proprietary software, you know, think of any big company name that comes to your head. Those companies come to you and say, this is what you do. You take software, you use it, and you, you get it done. But in Drupal, we just say, join the community. And that's great, and I think everybody in this room understands that. But some people need a little guidance. So we created BizConnect as one way to give them a newsletter that just keeps them in the know. You know, business managers actually do read email newsletters. <laughs> I know you guys have moved on from that. <laughs> like we have RSS and Twitter and all these other things, but they still do read these newsletters, which is great. So we compile information for them quarterly, uh, sometimes monthly if it's happening, and let them know about upcoming events, whether it's a camp, whether it's a meetup in their local area, whether it's a new initiative that we're taking on, whether it's a new conference that's coming, these things. We also, within our newsletter and within like this brochure, and you can take a look at it. This is one of the first brochures from that program. Is if we open it up, the very first page, the very first bullet point is, you're a new business. And it was how to get involved in the Drupal project. First bullet point, contribute code, documentation, themes, and modules back. You'd be surprised at how many businesses don't know how to do that. And so we're trying to be that conduit to say, yes, you can sponsor a conference. Yes, money helps. But you know what helps more? Code, documentation, and your involvement. So let's help you do both. Um, and with that project, I think a lot of people, I'm always surprised at this. You know, We currently now maintain a database of a little over 700 business names that are active in Drupal that haven't sponsored a camp or a meetup or come to our conference. But we go out there and actively find them and try to bring them in. And a lot of times they come to us and they're like, what do we do? You know, I remember a really good example was I was in New York City, uh, which is where I live, um, just earlier this year. And I got contacted by two companies. One had 50 employees. One had 10 employees. Neither of them were involved in the Drupal project at all. But all their employees were 100% dedicated to Drupal. The amazing part was one of these companies was four blocks from my house and I didn't know they existed. <laughs> it was kind of like one of those, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we need to you know, help these people learn how to get involved in our community. They hadn't come to the, to the meetup in New York City that has 400 people that meet at a camp, you know, a, a group that has thousands of people. And so we were looking for ways of, of getting them involved. So that's, that's how we help to empower the Drupal community. Uh, we have a new program that we'll be starting up later. Um, it's already started now, but we're sort of formalizing it is one that we call like the home improvement program. And it's uh, these things for continuous redesign in Drupal.org, continuing to improve it. Um, the migration to Git came through sort of this program. Um, plus one subscribes, which we are looking to kill. Um, so we can actually have a subscription service. These sorts of things. Ways that you can come to the association as a community and say, hey, as a community, we would like this on Drupal.org. This would help us. Uh, get our jobs done easier, better, faster. So that's also helping to empower the Drupal community to work on its own. Um, and I'm sorry, what was your name? Shan Liang. Okay. So just like Shan Liang said, scholarships. 
Um, I have a slide at the end of this deck. I think you'd be surprised at uh, what we've been able to do over the years with scholarships, but that's part of empowering the community. Um, letting people uh, get in uh, to our conferences um, or to other things with our grants programs here so they can be involved in the project. All right, moving on to these, these slides here. Number three and four, which are both around legal, uh, legal work and advocacy. Um, some people don't uh, maybe see it up front because it's a lot of times behind the scenes, but we are tasked with protecting the GPL source code. So when you write code and you contribute to the project, we want to make sure that it's your code, first and foremost, it's always yours, but that you've given it to the benefit of the community and that everybody around the world respects that. Sometimes, you know, people do take GPL software, obfuscate it, encrypt it, or whatever they want to do and try to sell it as their own or remove credits. And it unfortunately happens. So when it happens, we go out there and say, mm, no, <laughs> can't do that. Um, so we do that for the source code as well as the project um, and its community. The FSF, the Free Software Foundation, also works on, on some of this. And so this guy, anybody, anybody know who this is? No, but I don't know what's coming out of the top of your screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the little Drupal icon. It's so this, this, is, uh, this is Larry Garfield, or Krell, C-R-E-L-L, -L, on Drupal.org. Um, Big time contributor to the project, been around for uh, quite some time. He also helps do a lot of our legal work, and he does it uh, with the help of the Software Freedom Law Center, which works with our project to provide lawyer, um, uh, lawyers and legal advice so we can figure out how do we you know, go after um, people that take our Drupal icon and try to use it uh, in a for-profit sense and not contribute back. Or take the source code and you know, try to create a fork of it but not give credit to you guys for doing all the work, which has happened a few times. <laughs> so the fifth one, which I think is how everybody knows us, is organizing and promoting worldwide events. So I think you've seen these ones. We have Copenhagen, DC, uh, San Francisco. But we're also branching out. So we are the organization that runs DrupalCon North America. We run DrupalCon Europe um, here. DrupalCon South America is coming up, and we also want to branch out to Asia Pacific. So we are looking to do three DrupalCons per year um, rotating around the world, trying to grow these communities, support these communities, and, and bring a conference of this, this caliber, this quality, to where the people are. We also offer fiscal sponsorships. And right now, we only offer this in North America and Belgium, because this is where we have a legal presence. But for camps that are in North America, they use our, our, our legal body as a way of uh, running their camp. So they can run their camp as a nonprofit. And we can also offload some of that back-end business stuff uh, that Donna was referring to to get it off of them. You know, we have the nonprofit status. We have bank accounts. We have accountants, all of these things. They can run their camp, do their ticket sales if they have ticket sales, or their sponsorship sales. We'll help pay their expenses. So they're doing, the, they're doing the revenue raising, and we're helping them do the spending, but just so there's a legal body so that all happens with insurance, taxes, et cetera. And we've done that in North America and in Belgium. Questions on that? Yeah, definitely. I, I think we should uh, talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yep, setting up sort of uh, worldwide entities. Yep. There's similar situations. You know, the back end business bits of actually running a camp or a conference or something on this side. You know, they vary from country to country. And yes, there, there. I can definitely verify there are problems all around the world. Um, and this is something where this is what we can do now, and we're trying to figure out it's not going to happen soon, but.
but definitely over the course of several years, we'll work on figuring out how we could best help and support that community. Donna? So the question was, um, is there is part of the interim solution to partner with other open source um, organizations to help uh, this kind of international expansion or so, or, or supporting these international organizations? Uh, first, I want to say, we, we have no intention of really setting up a legal entity in every country in the world. There's no way we can really sustain that. Um, but we are looking at ways that we can um, help and support um, like people like Ricardo that have already set one up. How do we best work better uh, with, with, with Ricardo, or point Ricardo to other resources that are in the area, and be that. But we're, we're not gonna set up entities everywhere. But we are looking at what is that way. And we've been looking at other open source projects and how they do that. So just some stats from uh, DrupalCon. Uh, and we, we pulled these together just this year. So the DrupalCons that we've had have reached over 5,000 unique attendees. This isn't the number of attendees, uh, the sum of all attendees across. This is unique individuals because we have a high repeat rate, which I think is awesome. <laughs> so when people come to a conference, they come back. And they keep coming back, which is really great. So we've reached a little over 5,000 unique people that have come to our conferences, come to DrupalCon. In those 5,000 people, 55 countries are represented. And in terms of scholarships, uh, Shangdang, 115,000 US dollars has been given out, a little over $115,000 in scholarships to over 70 scholars. This is over the course of DrupalCon. Um, and scholars, sometimes they'll get a flight. Uh, a lot of times they get a flight, hotel. Um, you know, they're put up for the time the, of the conference as well as their conference fees. So we try to get people that, you know, maybe couldn't afford to fly all the way to North America from whichever country they're in or fly to, to Europe and get them into our conference. They're valuable. Uh, people in our community, and a financial barrier, uh, finances should not be a barrier. We can help with that. And we have, to the tune of $115,000. Now one that we are working on is communicating the benefits of the Drupal software. You know, this would be, I, I actually came up today in the keynote, there was a question over marketing. What role does the association play in marketing uh, of the Drupal project? The, what I can say now is that it's been talked about it's been discussed. It's on the roadmap. We don't have a particular plan or what we're going to do yet. But it's there. We're trying to figure out how to do it best uh, without stretching ourselves too thin. You know, uh, Part of this is the conference. When we run a conference, like say here in London, where we sold it out, we sold out this conference. We thought we would have maybe 1,500 people tops. That would be the tops. Really, we thought 1,300. We blew through that. But the great thing about when we do that is that people take notice. And people look and they go, whoa, Drupal, what's going on there? Uh, and we do try to use that as a hook. And we go out and we tell people, like, yeah, write about it. Tell everybody about it. Look what we did. Um, and it's, it's pretty great. So we're, we are getting there with the marketing, although we don't have a formal plan around. Today? Oh. We got to mention the Wall Street Journal? I did not know that. Let me pretend. Yeah, that was a great article. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know that. That's awesome. I like mentions. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay, I want to kind of get through the next few slides here because I, since uh, yeah, we have a lot of questions here, so just a quick kind of history of you know who who is the Drupal Association? You know, it's this thing <laughs> out there. Um, the Drupal Association is really people. It's passionate people that get involved. They're volunteers. Um, up until uh, late last year. 
vast majority of them were volunteers that started this thing uh, in 2006. So around five years ago, over five years ago, a few people got together. And you can see this is one of the earlier meetings. So we have Kieran, we have Gabor. Uh, so we have Kieran, Gabor, Angie, Boris, Gerhardt, and a few other people on the couch. I think one's Dries, and that was one of the the original association meetings. You know, this was 2006. It's people saying like, we're passionate, we want to make this happen. Now over time, we've had a lot of people get involved. So here's just kind of the roll call of, of who's heavily involved in the project or in the association. So we have Angie, and Dries, Addison, Laura Scott. These are going really slow. Kieran Lal, <laughs> Gerhardt. Carrie Gordon, Earl Miles, Neil Drum, Stephen Wittens, Khalid, did I get that right? <laughs> um, Robert Douglas, Tiffany Barris, Larry Garfield, Ronan Badur, Greg Nadison. There's a lot of people. It's Fernando with good company. <laughs> All right, Richard Stallman, Jeff Eaton, Michael Myers, Boris Mann, Rudy, Narayan, Jeff, and Lance, OSU, OSL, and Drupal. There's a lot of people involved in this. There's Stephen Peck, Bevan. And I had to pick this one, Neil Drum. Sorry. There's Zach Rosen, Nedro Rogers, Jeff Robbins, Isabel Scholes, Chris Fantome. Yeah, it's it's all about the socks in these pictures. We got the the. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> This is not good. Can I skip? All right, there's a lot of people involved. We're just going to flip through these here. That, that will go through. So there's been a lot of people involved. About 35 people have been involved in the creation of the Drupal Association over the years. Um, and in the next slide, as I'll just keep going as these, these uh, cycle through, is that last year in the fall, we made a big transition. All of these people I've been showing you to date were volunteers. Um, they dedicated hours and hours of their time, um, and they're from all parts of the world. In November of last year, we made a big switch. We began hiring for the first time. And two of the people we hired uh, in November of last year were Neil Kent and Megan Sanicki. We hired an events manager and a sales uh, manager. So. This is how we're helping to grow the conference, by hiring professional, um, professional people with years of experience to help build our conference to grow it. This is how we're expanding to three conferences per year. So the association is now in this transition period of we were a lot of volunteers heavily dedicated to now we are fully staffed. Uh, we have full-time staff um, that are dedicated to these projects. We're going to get there because i got to get to our next slide. There we go. All right, so we have Mosh, George Demet, Bill Fitzgerald, and Peter Wollinen. So it's a lot of people. So now the question is, where are we going? So last year, we hired two of our first people, Neil Kent and Megan, Megan Sanicki, who you'll see around the, uh, the floor. Both of them come to the association from outside of the Drupal community, but have years of experience in their area. Neil ran Macworld and a ton of other concerts and everything around. In fact, the photographer today that took our picture, he knew Neil from a Black Eyed Peas tour that they did together. This is what they do. They set up big events for people. Uh, Megan Sales, we then hired a bunch of other people to help us achieve our mission. So we hired, right over here, we hired Neil Drum to help with the technology backend to get our, our software infrastructure in place. We hired Paul up here to help with memberships. 
because we do want to create a strong membership organization. So we put somebody in place for that. Um, Daniel Finnerty, who's our accountant, Liz Trudeau, helps us get these data so that we know how much, uh, where everybody's coming from. Um, Annie Stone, who's an uh, office admin, who's just helping to keep everything together. And Isabel Scholes, who you'll see around, who's now a full-time event coordinator. She's just there to help run our conferences. So what are we up to? Here's kind of a quick list. As I mentioned before, we're building a strong membership program. We want to be that organization that is from, for the community and by the community. So we're increasing our communication out with our members. We started a program years ago, but never sent a newsletter <laughs> until recently. We're trying to help communicate with the members how you can get involved with the project. Uh, we launched membership benefits, uh, discounts to commonly used software or events that you might want to go to. Um, and those came from the community. We're trying to use our size to help you. Um, and then put in things like recurring memberships. Expanding our conferences. We're going to do three a year. Um, that'll start in, in 2012. Building out our community. Helping with that. We started our grants program. Fiscal sponsorship program. Our home improvement program. Which we're doing now and we're looking to do more upgrades in 2012. And planning for that now. So hardware infrastructure upgrades, DDoT updates. Our business community, working with them. We launched BizConnect to help connect these, these businesses together. We also started to create CXO events at our conferences where um, freelancers that are growing or small businesses that are one to three or uh, five person shops, if you're looking to network and get business advice from others around you, we have an event just for you to help you grow your business so you can help support the Drupal community. It is on Friday. So see me after, I'll give you information. And then where are we going? As I mentioned before, things that are on our, our roadmap but not quite there yet. Promotion of the Drupal project. Right now we promote DrupalCon like crazy. <laughs> Anything we can to promote this conference and get people here, we do it. Promotion of the project itself, it's planned. Other things that we're currently doing and planning, GPL protection, we do that now. The DrupalCon trademark, we protect that so people know w when it's an official event. Um, and also the Drupal trademark is planned. That has its own process right now. Dries is managing that. But we are working with Dries to make sure that we can start moving it over so it's in the trust of the community. But once we have a strong organization for that. Very similar to Linux Foundation, Linux Mark, and other projects, WordPress Foundation, WordPress. We're building that so that we can be that organization that represents the community. All right, so we have quite a lot of time left, actually. But it's more of a Q&A questions. I know it's probably a number of them, so it's open. Yeah. Can you? Sorry. I'm not very. <coughs> Uh, regarding the Drupal trademark, we already made some uh, work in Portugal uh, because we asked uh, Dries um, a note uh, giving us authorization to use uh, Drupal and uh, to uh, register uh, Drupal.pt. That, that can only be done if you are an entity inside of the country. So at this moment, we already arranged that and we would like to uh, make that site, to create a good site uh, with Drupal.pt. Uh, of course, uh, associated uh, with the Drupal Association. Great. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? This is open. Uh, what are your plans to expand into Southeast Asia and uh, Australia? So plans to expand into Southeast Asia and what was the other? Australasia and Australia and India. Oh. I mean, that's a new term, Australasia. Uh, Carrie, do you want to? I know this is something you're passionate about. Okay. I can well, answer if you'd like. Uh, well, for the last couple of years, we've been trying to uh, organize a third floating DrupalCon. The first one of those, I'm right on the speaker here. The first one of those will, please. The first one of those will uh, is likely be in South America. Uh, then from there, we'll probably be moving east. I guess it's east from here. 
I can't say where it's going to be, but, uh, but uh, certainly Australasia. Okay. Yeah, w yeah. We we know th there was a humongous. Uh, we were in Brisbane. Uh, there was a, a humongous uh, Drupal camp, uh, and I think you know I can't say we're going there, but uh, there's a possibility. We're we're certainly reaching out to other areas, South Asia, and uh, looking even further east. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I I, I don't really have anything to tell you as far as what we're going to do, but uh, we will be having three Drupal cons a year. So, uh. so um, I, I think that it, the short answer is it's on a roadmap. Yes, um, 2012, we'll, we'll, we will go to three in 2012, um, and then we'll branch out from there. So right behind. So membership, um, that's a really good question. Let me just. Uh Australia, uh, Australia, Asia. Awesome. Hey, I like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're we work with a lot of people, and we're trying our best to we when we run because when we talk about a DrupalCon, there is a particular expectation that a DrupalCon has. You're going to meet core developers. You're going to meet a large community. You're going to have code sprints. It happens over multiple days. There's a particular expectation, um, and so we want to be the body that uh, runs that sort of uh, conference at that that hits that expectation. Um, as well as helps to support other sh other events like camps and meetups where you may need support, which is like the cultivation grants, um, which again a lot of them are going to, and you, you'll see. Wait till tomorrow, you'll see we're hitting that area. Um, I'm not going to say where. <laughs> Try not to steal their thunder. Um, I'm sorry. What was your name? Leslie. Okay. So Leslie had a question on what are our memberships. We have two types of memberships: individual memberships and organizational memberships. Individual memberships are 30 US dollars or 22 euros, and they help to support the project. And the benefits are listed, you can go to the association, this is not on that screen. How about that? Is that a little, that's a little better. Um, so here are some of the benefits. Um, we did arrange for some discounts at uh, various places. Again, this bubbled up from the community, so we use our leverage. Um, it helps to promote. Uh, membership badge, and other things that are coming up. Basically, we try to keep you in loop. Help support us, and we'll try to help support you. Um, we also have an organizational membership, which is roughly the same thing. It's just designed for a company to help support us, and it's 100 US dollars or um, 77 euros a year. 73. I can't do my math. Okay. Had a question in the back? So the, the question was, uh, you know, it would be great if there was a central. Uh, your, I'm sorry, what was your name? Derman. Uh, Derman yeah. from Glasgow in Scotland, and you're. So you're you're helping to set up the Scottish Drupal Association, and so currently, as an association, we don't have a whole lot to offer. Be be blunt and honest, um, it's it's on our roadmap. 
there's a lot of information out there. Um, and we're trying to figure out how best to pull that together. So we've started on it, but we are looking for a lot of help on figuring out how can we best help that um, without setting up legal entities everywhere, but really how do we get that knowledge out there. Um, I think one of the best ones was we're here today, we're, we're here this week, we should just set up a BOF. I'll come into the BOF, I'll tell you what I know, well, I'll try to pull other people into the BOF, and let's have one of those and, and, and talk about it and see what we can do. But it's, there's a lot of info out there. Other questions? How are we on time? Yeah, um, Drupal in the, in the, definitely in the Middle East. It's uh, right at this moment. It is not on our roadmap in terms of where we're we're headed because we are when we run a conference as an association. It takes a lot of resources. It takes a lot of staff time. It takes a lot of financial resources. It takes a lot of calling and emailing sponsors and saying help support us. This is where one working with uh, other national organizations to see what we can do to help support that, um, but. On that same, it's definitely noted. You know, last year I spent um, a lot of time in the Middle East in, in Jordan, which is where uh, there you are, <laughs> where I met Isa there, uh, who's done a ton of work uh, with open source uh, in Jordan in that in that region. Uh, I just came back from OzCon where we were talking. You know, where's the best place? Should we Turkey, um, Egypt? You know, where whereabouts is the best place centrally located for people to get to? Because we do recognize things like how do people get visas? And cross these borders. Uh, what's feasible in terms of you know people coming? What can they afford to, to pay in lodging and travel costs, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I think working and better working with our national organizations is going to help support that more than just waiting on us to do something there because we only we have so many resources and they're they're not unlimited. I wish they were though. <laughs> Has anybody got the pot of gold that you can just give us? Yep, question? Okay, so your question is democracy in the Drupal Association. Okay, in terms, do you have something specific? I can talk a lot about that, but. The. Okay, so the question is, um, uh, talking about the democracy or the governance, I'm gonna be, can I use the word governance? The governance of the Drupal Association and how it interacts with the community um, and how we keep ourselves on track. Is that, would that summarize it? Okay, so that's a big one. <coughs> I, I don't know, how many of you will read the association news feed? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. <laughs> That's right. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, if you if you've seen the uh, the news feed, like in the past several months or so, there is a number of posts about this. Um, the association. There is one here improving the Drupal Association. There's some ones about DrupalCon. And there's one just before this that I want to draw attention to. Renewing the organizational structure of the Drupal Association. So this just came out July, um, so not, not too long ago. And it speaks directly to governance. So we used to have an organizational structure of a general assembly, which were permanent members, and they were voting members. And those permanent members would vote on the board. And there were um, nine board members. At that point, there were nine. Yeah. Was that? It's changed. <laughs> so if you're going to take notes, take notes in one minute. <laughs> so uh, that, that's how it had changed. Now, we took a, took a hard look at that because that worked great for a few years. 
as the organization was primarily volunteers um, and really had no money. And it was just people working together. But as we started to take on more responsibility, run bigger conferences, um, uh, revenue jumped. You know, uh, are these conferences are, are not cheap anymore. They're about a million US dollars each uh, to put on. So it's, it's a lot of money coming in and out. And we need a lot of infrastructural support for that. Um, customer service, support, and et cetera, et cetera. And we wanted to figure out the best way of how do we make sure that the, we're on track, we're working with the community, while also growing ourselves and having the support that we need as a company and as an organization to grow. And volunteers are very dedicated, very passionate about uh, certain initiatives that they have. Um, and with our permanent membership base, they were only given a governance role, but not a role to volunteer or to take a lead. So we inherently created a really unfortunate conflict of interest where people were trying to govern the money that was being spent, but also be a lead to spend money. So it was a, a really bad loop that we needed to fix. And so we went around this huge structure, and you can read this, this entire thing here, but if you want to take notes, what we ended up coming up with was a new governance model that is nine board members that are selected by something called the nomination committee. The nomination committee is made up of uh, community members, board members, something called the advisory board. It's 10 people, um, the executive director and Dries. We're all kind of mixed in. And we go out and find board members that help create a skill set of the board that helps us support the organizational's need. You know, whether we need legal needs or a, a, a finance person, or somebody that can help with <coughs> fundraising, or somebody that can help us go to certain areas of the world if we're gonna go to the Middle East or Australasia, and getting these strong board members. But at this point, we did sort of remove ourselves from the community because it became the board working with uh, 10 people that were selected to create a new board. It's almost like the board creating or selecting the board, which is a very common way that happens in nonprofits. So what we also created were two additional seats and a flexible board, and those two additional seats are called at-large seats. So they're board seats, and they're chosen by the community at large. So our board should always be reflective of our community to begin with. You know, if they're not, they, why would you be on the board of a community-ran organization or an organization that, uh, that supports a community? But we wanted to make sure that we did have that check. So the community puts on uh, two board seats, um, and they vote for them. They're not selected, they're not sought out, or, or such. So board, the nine board, have three year terms, and so three will come off every year. Three off, three on. The at large are single year terms. So they're to get that, those new ideas and that fresh blood in there to, to make sure that we're always listening to the community, and it's not somebody who's been there for a while. Because we need, that, we need that, that consistency. Year after year, we're learning with each other. We're not cycling and changing, but we also need that, those fresh ideas, that fresh blood, and to make sure that we're on track. So all that is outlined in here. Questions? Does that answer your question? Okay. We have a few more minutes. All right, five. Any other questions? What we're doing, where we're going? Um, so the question, just to repeat it for the folks that we are uh, recording this, is uh, what about the fears of the association is taking over? Yeah. That we're running the cons, we're going to get the trademark, we're going to run the camps, we're going to take over, <laughs> and, and local community has no, no input. Um, I want to answer the camps one first, and then I'll come back to the cons and the trademark. Can I pick on you? All right. Can you talk into the mic? Yes. yes. Can you come up here, too? Uh, 
Hi, so my name is Jen Lampton. I've been running the Bay Area Drupal Camp since 2007. I was also one of the lead organizers for DrupalCon San Francisco. And in terms of DrupalCon, maybe I'll let you talk to this later, there's a lot of influence, but in terms of your local camp, you don't have to listen to them at all. Um, we do... I put her <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm a perfect example. We're, uh, this year, we're, we have zero involvement from Drupal Association in running our camp. So in spite of the fact that I've worked with them very closely in the past in, in, the past in terms of DrupalCon, we still want to keep our camp like what our community wants to do and not necessarily what the Drupal Association wants to do. And sometimes those things are in line. And sometimes you're like, you know what, we'll just let our people decide what they want to do and they'll vote and whatever they want, we'll build for them. So if you don't want to have any involvement at all, you can. Um, you can also choose any range in between. So if the only help you want is like a fiscal harbor for your money, you can do that. If you want more help, you can probably find other ways to get more help. But if you want to keep it completely your own, you're also completely welcome to do that. So. Uh, so in terms of the trademark, that is something we don't do right now. That that's Dries. Um, Dries manages that and has a you know, there's a whole trademark license and rules and things that everybody can read. Um, and there's there's things like automatic licenses. So you know, if you're doing it for the community benefit, you get an automatic license. It's pretty much just to prevent people from abusing um, the trademark. Um, if we take that over um, as the association and really hold it in the care of the community which would be the only reason we would take it over, is just to hold it in the care of the community. Um, we, we wouldn't change any of those. Uh, um, we have no intention, I don't see why we would. It's, it's really, we're here to support the community. So those are the ways we do it. We do offer fiscal sponsorship for camp, but I don't get involved at all. I live in New York City, and New York City is using us as a fiscal sponsorship. I don't show up to their meetings. I don't. I don't participate in the email threads, I, I, but I live there. They could. <laughs> um, I helped the Portland community do it as well. The only interaction I had with the Portland community is I showed up one day and handed them a credit card and it said, go spend your money. That's it. And that's, that's really about the level of interaction we want. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I don't see that. In terms of the conferences, we um, continue to work with the local communities um, and, and keep them involved uh, in the conferences. So we're running DrupalCon Denver right now. That Denver community is heavily involved um, in terms of the site design, in terms of the content that's happening there. Uh, really, our involvement has come to take care of the back-end business boring bits. Um, do you use authorized.net or Cybersource? <laughs> do you have 50 chairs in a room or 45 chairs in a room? Um, can we afford it uh, when you're talking about risk calculations when you're talking 3,000 people and food and coffee and things like that. But the, c the meat of the conference really still comes directly from the community. Um, I don't participate in those at all. Um, in fact, ask some Chicago people. I got torn down a few times for, <laughs> for having a suggestion like, this is ours. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, no, we, we, we just want to be here to support. Does that answer your question or do you have a follow up or? Okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right, we have probably 30 seconds or a minute. Any other questions or no? I got a whole minute. You can do a lot in that. Yeah. So in terms of uh, marketing, right? It's a it's a really broad, um, it's, a, it's a really broad topic of you know what is it that we do for marketing. So let me tell you some of the things that we do do now, uh, which are primarily around our conference. Um, our conferences do hire PR firms. Um, we hire PR firms to get the word about the conference out, and I highlight when we do really awesome stuff like sell out the conference or uh, release a new version of uh, of Drupal or um, have some really great sprints or code or bring over 55 countries together um, in, you know, under one roof. So we do hire a PR company to do that. 
it's not a very large contract. Um, you know, we're not spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on this, nowhere near that. But we do hire somebody to get traditional print in there. Um, we do have uh, paid staff that do work on things like to make sure that Facebook is updated, Twitter is updated, um, et cetera, that we're constantly out there communicating and telling people, uh, as well as sort of writing blog posts and aggregating other people's blogs, p blog posts. But we do it primarily right now around the conference. And we do promote camps in some uh, cases through our newsletters with our own membership base um, and organizational members and things like that, while also trying to coordinate the marketing and PR efforts of other companies. So other companies will come to us and say, what should we talk about? Like, we have a marketing budget, but how do we help? And we'll say, well, this is how you can help. Here's some bullet points. Here's some people to talk to. You know, go talk to these people or get in connection with these people or those. That's what we're doing right now. In terms of what we want to do, that's a big open-ended question because marketing is a big topic. <laughs> it's, uh, it requires a lot of money. And right now we're focused on making sure we can run good conferences, we can expand our conferences, build our community, and build a strong community first, and then go and spend that money elsewhere. Um, it's, it's on our heads, but it, there's, no, uh, there's no definitive roadmap that I can tell you what we're going to do. All right, one last one, and then we got to wrap up. You have a question, Donna? Okay. So we generally grab Neil Drum in the middle of the night from his hotel room. We tie him up, blindfold him, spin him around 20 times, and point him towards a map. Whichever, you know, wherever his head hits first, that's where it's at. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a big process. Um, so we, this, uh, I'm sorry, what is your name from Germany? Karsten. So this will actually speak to you, uh, I think. It's a community-ran process. There's uh, a number of people that, that we, we pull together. Jen, do you want to actually talk about this? <laughs> So this is everybody, this is Jen Lampton from Bay Area Dribble Camp. Um, but she, I just want to clarify, she doesn't work for the association. She's not a board member or general assembly member or a staff member. She's just, just involved. 